obstruction. Uh, it could be intra intrinsic, meaning that it could, that the patients can be born with a narrow um, narrow common bile duct. Uh, it can be caused from stones, tumors. Now, this strictures they can be born with that also. Uh, it could be an intrinsic or an extrinsic. So say I've had uh, a history of having chronic cholecystitis. Chronic cholecystitis. And if I'm always having problems with my gallbladder draining because of the inflammation, then this stricture could be extrinsic, okay? So bile duct uh, obstruction can happen inside the liver or it can happen outside the liver, okay? Uh, intrahepatic can be caused from uh, PCS, PSC, which is primary sclerosis uh, cholangitis, and that's where scars have hardened and narrowed the duct, and it could cause serious liver damage. If it's congenital, they hope, I mean, you, you don't have any symptoms until it's too late. So if I have a child that is born with narrow ducts, then I'm not gonna know there's anything wrong with my child until their LFTs get enlarged or if they turn jaundice. They can go in and widen it. Um, by doing an ERCP. Uh, obstruction at the porta hepatis, and everybody remembers that the porta hepatis is the hilum of the liver. Uh, that's where your bile duct goes in, your veins, your arteries, your uh, lymph nodes. Uh, and I could have a, a cholangiocarcinoma at that area or I can have a metastatic tumor. I can have a biliary obstruction at the pancreas. I have a pancreatic cancer uh, that is causing the flow of the bile to back up. Uh, I could have cholidocal lithiasis, meaning I can have and a cholidocal lithiasis. You can have a cholidocal cyst that you are born with and it, it is extra hepatic or I can have a, a, cholangi, a choliocarcinoma. Basically what happens is if I have an obstruction or an inflammation of the ducts, then it loses its elasticity and the ampulla of water uh, no longer functions the way that it should. Now, the ampulla of water and the sphincter of Odi there are two different structures. The ampulla of water, think, think of that as the straw. The ampulla of water, think of that as your lips. So when you're sucking that, that, um, that thick wind, you're trying to suck that thick Wendy's uh, frosty up, you're gonna put more pressure on the straw and what happens? Your lips put more pressure and then the straw will collapse. Well, the same thing happens with the common bile duct. By the way, I do love Wendy's Frosties. I usually eat it though before I get home. So extrinsic, you can have a cancer that is going to compress the duct. I could be born with something pressing on the duct. I could have a stone that uh, causes edema of the, of the duct because it's gonna swell trying to correct itself. Or you can have a, a ball in the hyster valves, meaning the stone can get stuck in hyster valves, so the hyster valves don't long, no longer work, or I can have a stricture. A stricture is just a narrowing of the duct. 
clinically, the patient is going to have uh, right upper quadrant pain. If it goes unchecked, then you can have jaundice and you can have a fever. You'll have an increase of your bilirubin. It could be normal. You could have an increase or you can have an increase in your alcohol. Okay. Uh, the duct can appear, can appear to be dilated and your normal, your laboratories can be normal. It depends on what stage of the disease that you, you start being symptomatic and you go to the doctor. When you measure the duct, you do not measure the wall. You measure it from inner wall to inner wall, inner wall. And it's best to use color because you also have your hepatic artery uh, that's in that level. If you're intrahepatic, then you have the hepatic veins. The, in, the common hepatic duct is considered dilated if it's over six millimeters and the CBD is considered dilated if it's over eight millimeters. I think in Harris Health, it's three for uh, the common hepatic duct and it's six for the common bile duct. For the common bile duct, it should never be over one, no matter what, whether they've had it removed or whether they're 100 years old. It should never be over one cent. Uh, it can be resolved by having a uh, cholecystectomy. The intrahepatic ducts measuring greater than two millimeters or more uh, can cause a dilatation of the adjacent portal vein. You'll see it, what we call a double barrel shotgun sign. Because what is that? Because the portal system is not only is it in the triad, uh, you have the common hepatic artery, you have the common bile duct, and you have the portal vein. And that is what we call a double barrel. Okay. Uh, you'll see those intrahepatic. Okay. So this is considered intrahepatic dilatation, and this is called intrahepatic dilatation because you have a dilatation of the, uh, the ducts inside of the liver. This is also called intrahepatic dilatation, and you can definitely tell that this is intrahepatic dilatation. It's important for us as sonographers to find the level and the cause of that obstruction. If it's intrahepatic, uh, I'm mainly going to check my bile duct first because that's going to be the easiest thing for me to check is the bile duct. I'm going to open up the bile duct and I am going to see it taper all the way to the pancreatic head. A lot of times the a stone will get stuck at the head or it will get stuck at the ampulla of water. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to go back to if I if those appear normal, then did I miss something in the liver? I'm going to go back to the liver, and I'm going to do a very careful survey through the liver in sagittal and transverse to find out why those ducts are uh, dilated. We're also going to look at the wall of the, the ducts because if they are um, enlarged, then we have cholangitis, meaning the walls of the, the ducts are going to be inflamed. If you have focal thickening, 
uh, you can have stones, pancreatitis, or some type of a pancreatic cancer. Okay. You can also have what we call Corolli's disease. It is, I think it's congenital uh, Corolli's disease is. Uh, you'll have an enlargement with a hepatic arteries. With Corolli's disease, uh, the intrahepatic ducts uh, will kind of look like a varicocele. Um, you can also have a cavernous transformation of the portal vein, or you can have an arterial venous shunt inside of the liver. Everybody remembers what an arterial venous shunt is? Yeah, where they like join the artery and vein. Yeah, the artery and the vein is abnormal and joint. And you can get those anywhere in the body. Wow, this one's an easy one, right? So here you have, uh, gallbladder, pancreas. So here is the common hepatic duct. Here is your portal. And now this is at your confluence. You dial it in. And this is your portal. I don't think this, they say that this is my portal. This looks like the portal to me. They've got the portal vein in transverse. They've got the hepatic artery in transverse. So I guess maybe this is the common hepatic duct and the common bile duct because this is what it looks like when it goes through the head of the pancreas. Yeah. You can tell by looking at this gallbladder what's going on with that gallbladder. Sludge. Looks like it has sludge. Look at the wall. The it has pericholecystic fluid mm -hmm. and it has edema of the wall. In this one, uh, you have the CHD that, remember, the CHD branches off into the left and to the right. I think they have this mismarked. I think this should be the left and this one should be the right. And then here's your common hepatic duct and here's your portal system. What This right here is the hepatic artery. So what would this be down here? IBC. Okay, so you hear you've got a list of intrahepatic, meaning a normal development of, uh, and that is a proximal bile duct tumor. They could either be benign or malignant. Klatskin tumor, y'all remember what that is? Or have we even studied that yet? I didn't think we studied that. Huh? I, I don't, don't think we're going over that. Yeah, I didn't think we studied that. Michelle. Okay. A Klatskin tumor is a tumor at the right and left common hepatic duct, I think. Um, cholangitis, tumors of the porta hepatis, Maritzi syndrome. What is Maritzi syndrome? We've already uh, talked about stole, that. A stone stuck in the neck of the gallbladder. A stone stuck in the neck. The neck. Very good. Cholecholithiasis. I have a stone in the duct. No matter where it's at, it could be intrahepatic or it could be extra hepatic. It's called a cholidocal lithiasis. We can't call it a, um, my brain just went blank. <clears throat> a cholelithiasis. A cholelithiasis is just in the gallbladder. 
a cholecystic diathesis is in the gut. I can have a cancer of the pancreatic head. I can have a pseudocyst obstructing the CBD. Pseudocysts are big at the in the pancreas. I could have acute pancreatitis, chronic pancreatitis, a cholecystic cyst, lymph adenopathy that's pressing on the the duct. I can have a stricture, or I can have an ampul ampullary tumor. When they talk about an ampullary tumor, what are they talking about? Uh, the tumor in ampulla of liter. Correct. So it will be at the duodenum area. Cholecystic lithiasis is the most common pathology of the bile duct system. Uh, gallbladder stones are usually formed in the gallbladder, and then they pass through to the CPD. Sometimes they can pass, and sometimes they get stuck. So what happens is they can do a cholecystectomy, but if they do a cholecystectomy, the stones could be in the duct, and they can release um, if they're in the duct. They're, they've got to come out on their own, but they can do what we call an ERCP, and then they can release the stones from the duct. If the stones stay in there too long, it can cause an inflammation. Okay, so here is a cholecystic lithiasis. Here is the stone inside of the, the, the common bile duct. It's already passed through or trying to go through the pancreatic head. And notice how isoechoic it is. So how would I fix that to make sure I can get this shadow? I'm going to change transducers. I'm going to go to a higher frequency transducer. First off, you're going to try to move the patient so that way you can maybe if you can hit that stone at a different angle, then you can cause um, a shadowing to happen. But the easiest way is just to visit with your patient and uh, go to another transducer because you know that that's going to work. Especially if you have an older patient that you can't move very well, you also have to consider the patients. So cholecystic lithiasis, uh, it may be in asymptomatic. So I could have a stone that can pass straight through but it will not cause me problems until it obstructs. Uh, now, if it passes through, it's going to go straight on into my duodenum because remember the common bile duct inserts into the second uh, section of the duodenum. Clinical symptoms, <clears throat> I'm going to have right upper quadrant pain, I'm going to have intermittent or persistent uh, obstructive jaundice. I could have cholangitis, meaning inflammation of the bile ducts. And if I do have obstruction, I'm going to have an increase in bilirubin, cofos, and transaminase. Okay? Uh, temporary symptom relief if stone passes into the duodenum or if it returns back into the gallbladder because it could be in the valves of Heister, which are in the neck, and that would cause a problem, but the valves of Heister could cause it to regurgitate. Or if it's already in the cystic duct, if I eat a big fatty meal and I have lots of bile that is going to be transported to the gallbladder, then that bile can also push it back up. Depends on where the stone is. Uh, common 
false duct stones are found in 80 to 20 percent of patients undergoing a cholecystectomy. Um, and then you only have two to four percent of patients following cholecystectomy that are still symptomatic because they missed it in the stone. Wouldn't you feel horrible if your patient had to go to surgery twice because you missed a stone? You can't just assume that stones are only in the gallbladder. It's our job as a sonographer to make sure that um, we don't miss a diagnosis. So stones can be visualized whether they, um, the, the bile duct is dilated or, or not. It's, uh, of course, if it's dilated, it's gonna be easier for us to see. But when we survey, uh, we want to look for that shadow because that shadow is our defining diagnosis for a, a, a gallbladder stone, okay? So be very, very mindful that you're just not taking that image any longer uh, because as a senior sonographer, it, you have to find those pathologies uh, because the sonographer after you is just gonna come through and either look at your images or they're just going to go through a quick survey scan uh, to make sure you didn't miss any pathology. They're not going to spend a lot of time on the common body. So, but you as a student should spend a lot more time than they would on a common body uh, because you've got to learn to uh, trace that gallbladder, that common bile duct, all the way to the head of the pancreas. You don't want to just stop at the port of hepatis because stones aren't always at the port of hepatis. Sometimes they're at the pancreatic head and sometimes they're at the bile duct. And the more you learn to trace, by the time you get out of school and you have your first job, it'll be just second nature to you, okay? Oh, another thing is we have to be careful that we're not looking at valve gas because bowel gas will also cause a shadowing defect. Uh, so you, you, you could either roll your patient left or right. You could decube your patient, uh, preferably to the left, because that way you're throwing the hepatic flexor also forward sometimes, and um, you can work around your, your, bio, your bowel. Uh, if you see the duct, sometimes it's really, really hard for us to see it because of the gas. Uh, you can compress the transducer a little bit harder to uh, be able to move that bowel gas out of the way. Uh, some patients you have to take in a big breath, some people you have to take out and blow your breath out. And so you're going to try all the techniques that you can on the machine. Uh, you're going to use harmonics um, and you're going to answer to the patient's position because an ERCP is an invasive procedure. Um, uh, you want to do everything you can to keep them from having an ERCP. Know much about the MR exam that they can do. So here is cholelithiasis. Here's your portal vein. Here's your common bile duct. And here is your pancreas. And you can see that this is one, two, three stones. Here again, it's it as as the the CBD goes into the head of the pancreas, uh, then you can see it taper on the back side as it's about to go through the, the bile duct. Hang on, I'm hot. Let me put on a fan. I guess I've had too much coffee this morning.
doing okay? Yeah. My legs started sweating. Uh, so here you can see, um, you can see a stone in the distal part of the common ball duct. Okay. Here you can have stones in the distant ball duct, and there's what, one, two, three, four, maybe five stones going through the head of the pancreas. What you're seeing here is the duodenum and uh, this has uh, fluid in it. That's the only way that we can see the duodenum. Maybe the patient just had a glass of water or something because what happens is the stomach empties it goes through the pylorus. The pylorus goes into the first part of the duodenum. And as a sonographer, the pylorus is going to be important for us to learn because we have the neonates come in so we can uh, uh, check out their pylorus to make sure they don't have a stenosis. Uh, so anytime you have the chance to go and and take part in that, um, please do, because they don't come around all the time. So if you know that one is coming down, be sure you ask uh, Nancy or James uh, if you can be part of that exam. So here I have cholidocal lithiasis. Uh, and here's my portal vein, here's my hepatic artery, here's my CBD, and uh, they did an ERCP on this patient, and it ended up being sludge. Uh, here is cholidocal lithiasis, so here's my CBD. I don't see my portal system. You can see that something's here and then something's here. I don't know if this is part of anything either. So uh, it's a heterogeneous mass within the um, uh, common balda and it ended up being an adenocarcinoma inside the balda. And notice how homogeneous it is to or I mean how isoechoic it is to the tissues around it, but it is a heterogeneous mass. Cholangiocarcinoma, it's a primary bile duct malignancy. Most of them are going to be an adenocarcinoma and they can grow into the CHD and the CBD uh, they can occur anywhere within the biliary tree. Uh, the most common is at the porta hepatis, which is called a Klatskin's tumor. Um, didn't I tell y'all that I thought that that was uh, at the at the left and right hepatic ducts? Yeah. So yeah, so it. I knew it was somewhere, so it's at the port of hepatitis. Not for certain. I'm going to, here, hang on for just a second. That's in tumor. I thought it was at the bowel duct. at the confluence of right and left hepatic valve. Okay, well that's where I thought it was, but here it says this is the port of hepatis. Oh. And 
didn't think that that was right. I thought it was at the... Yeah, so let me change this real fast. Because if I don't, I'll forget. That's what it said at the, at the bifurcation? Yes, at the confluence of right and left back. Portion of the CPD because remember the distal portion of the CPD is the ampulla of otter at the sphincter of OD and it empty, empties into the second part of the duodenum. It usually happens to uh, men and women over the ages of 50. Risk factors include sclerosing uh, cholangitis. What is that? Sclerosing cholangitis. The narrowing of the. Uh... Yeah, it's a narrowing of the yeah, ducts. Yeah, narrowing of the ducts. Narrowing of the ducts. It could be common hepatic duct or it could be um, CBD, either one. You can have cholidocal cyst or you can have a parasitic infection. Uh, cholangiocarcinoma, uh, surgical cre treatment, uh, if it's detected early, most of the time it is in the late stages. Um, and basically they give the, make the patient comfortable uh, for the rest of their life. So it doesn't sound like it has a very good uh, survival rate if it is found in the later stages. Okay. Because what does the word palliative treatment mean? Do I remember? No? Well, in all, it pretty much means to make the patient comfortable. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like uh, my husband, after he had his leg amputated, uh, they put him in a palliative care uh, facility. And he was there for about six weeks. Uh, in other words, they couldn't do anything else for him. They just made him comfortable. Gave him pain medication anytime he wanted it. Uh, signs and symptoms include marked ecteris and a palpal gallbladder if obstructed. I don't know what the word ecteris means, uh, but you'll have abdominal pain, anorexia, fatigue, weight loss, hepatomegaly, and ascites in the latter stages. Um, uh, laboratory values, you'll have uh, bilirubin because you're going to be jaundice and alcophos. Sonographic signs of a cholangiocarcinoma, you'll have ductal wall irregularities. Uh, the tumor could be small it will be hard for us to see, especially if it is isoechoic to the surrounding tissue. It's up to our job. It's our job as a sonographer to identify the level of the obstruction. Uh, it could be hypoechoic, hyperechoic, isoechoic, 
and so you also want to look at your portal vein to make sure that the tumor has not invaded the portal system. Uh, you're also going to look for liver metastasis, ascites, and adenopathy. Adenopathy is um, usually going to be diagnosed in the lymph system. Here is a cholangiocarcinoma where uh, it's in, here's the common hepatic duct. Here is a cholangiocarcinoma and uh, and what else? Look at these. Intrahepatic dilatation. Don't get those confused with your portal system, right? Because you're going to put color on that to be able to make the diagnosis. Don't confuse that because the portal system, no matter where you are, never has three, has two channels. It only has one channel. Here, this this mass is at the porta hepatis, a cholangiocarcinoma at the porta hepatis. That's why whenever you're scanning, that we, a lot of times, uh, I've noticed a lot of you will get the, the right portal in, on your imaging instead of your main portal your main portal, you dial in your transducer where the transducers are around 10 o'clock. The, the main portal should never be parallel to your eyes. It should always be diving down from like 10 o'clock to about five o'clock. So when you're, when you're doing your imaging of the portal vein, uh, make sure you're at the porta hepatis and you're just not taking a picture of the right portal vein. The right portal vein is going to be horizontal to your eyes. The main portal, portal vein will be diving down from like 10 o'clock to about Here's a, a gallbladder. And you can see that we have a very large mass inside of the, the liver. And you can see that this is one, this is one, this is one. It's a very heterogeneous uh, liver here. Uh, so here you have a, a mass that is actually compressing the gallbladder wall and you have a non-shadowing sludge ball. Uh, it could be a polyp and what do we do for a polyp? Looking for the stalk. We look for the stalk. So to do that, we have to put color. Your best option for that is your power color because you are looking for a little tiny stall. So here is your liver. Here is the common, um, this is your portal vein. And this looks like it would be the common hepatic duct. I would never call this the common bile duct because here's my gallbladder and anything to the left is considered common hepatic duct. Anything on the right of the gallbladder is considered common oh bile God. duct. Um, other possible malignant intraductal tumors can be a hepatocellular carcinoma that has invaded the bile duct, a cystoadenocarcinoma, a metastasis of a melanoma, lymphoma, a metastasis at the 
cordohepatis and a platkin tumor and a rhabdomyo sarcoma. This is a, uh, a muscle tumor. Benign tumors are cyst adenomas, fibromas, urinomas, neur neuronomas, uh, lyomyomas. Oh my goodness, what's that? Lyomyomas, a hamartomas, and a lymphoma. So, a lyomyomas. We see this a lyomyomas also in our in our uh, uterus. And it just tells you that it's part of what what type of tissue is made up of that tumor. Uh, you can have other causes of non-shadowing solid intraductal masses include a ruptured hydatid cyst, which is a parasite, a sludge, blood clots, which would be a thrombus and non-shadowing calculi, which we call sludge balls. Uh, extrinsic masses do compress the duct. You can have a pseudocyst, adenopathy, lymphoma, METs, and a pancreatic mass or inflammation of the pancreas. So because the duct becomes dilated proximal to the obstruction, what duct would be dilated if the obstruction is at the porta hepatis? It would be the common hepatic duct. Yep. Okay, because the common bile duct uh, is uh, that transformation usually takes place at the porta hepatis. What is the likely diagnosis of focal thickening and is documented when evaluating the ductal wall? C. And evaluating the ductal wall. Focal thickening. Well, we know this isn't it, right? Because yeah, this is a gallbladder. Would it? Uh -huh. Cholangiitis is uh, the wall of the gallbladder, right? Yeah, yeah. Cholangiitis. Okay. Documenting when evaluating what is a likely diagnosis of focal thickening is documented in the ductal wall. I think you see. Cholangiitis Col is the inflammation of walls the, of ducts. Yeah. I think it's cholangitis. Oh. Yeah. Yes. I think so. Okay. Because this is the only one with uh, the only thing that caused thickening is uh, inflammation. What is the likely diagnosis if focal thickening is documenting when evaluating the duct? Oh, is that the same one? Oh, it's exactly the same one. Okay. Must have repeated it twice. <clears throat> what is the most common pathology of the biliary tract? Stones. 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 What statement is true regarding colio coleangiocarcinomas? B. Yeah, it occurs in men and women. B. Yeah. Uh, cholangitis. Uh, it is a chronic inflammation and fibrosis of the intrahepatic and extrahepatic um, biliary system. Sometimes it could come, it's genetic because you can be born with sclerosing cholangitis. Um, <coughs> it could be secondary 
due to uh, prior inflammation. You'll have uh, right upper quadrant pain, uh, fatigue, puritis, oops, 